Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this British 7 ton armoured car Mark IV. This is, I believe, also known as a Humber Mark IV, though the kit doesn't seem to mention that anywhere. Unless it does and I've missed it. Sometimes that kind of thing just happens. Anyway, this is a 148th scale plastic kit from Tamiya, and as usual with these kits, there's nothing on the back of the box, so why not just look at what's inside? Sprues. This is not in any way a surprise. There isn't a huge amount of parts here, which I suppose makes sense, it is a fairly small vehicle. The parts that are here though are quite nice and neatly moulded, and I was not able to find any defects or obvious manufacturing errors. Being that this is a Tamiya kit that's not really surprising, they are known for their consistent high quality. Mould lines are of course present, but that isn't really an indicator of poor quality, I suppose unless they're really really bad, but that is certainly not the case here. I would say that they are almost negligible, though you'll still have to spend a bit of time tidying them up, though it should be fairly quick and painless. The detail here is pretty good and crisp. I'm not an expert on these armoured cars. You're not an expert on anything, Herbert. Well, yeah, obviously. Anyway, I'm sure there is some simplification of detail. There's always some compromise to make the model practical to manufacture, so this is not likely to be considered extremely detailed. But it's still quite good, and unless you're trying to create a museum quality replica, I'm sure this is more than good enough. And if you are trying to create a replica, this would be a good starting point. A sheet of background information is included, and this gives a couple of paragraphs in various languages of information about this vehicle's inception and evolution. On the other side we find a painting and marking guide for the Polish 1st Armoured Division. This is basic, as these always are, but it will work fine as a starting point. The instructions are pretty much what I would expect from a Tamiya kit like this. They're the big fold-out kind, but this set isn't too big, mostly because it's not a huge vehicle and there aren't that many steps. I would still prefer a nice booklet with pages, but this'll work fine. The actual instructions are well laid out and easy to understand and follow, and really that's what matters. A sheet of decals is included, of course, and these will allow you to mark your armoured car the same way as the marking guide suggests. You can of course use any other markings you might like, but you'll have to acquire decals for that elsewhere. And that's what's in the box. Time to glue bits of plastic together. I start with the frame, onto which I glue the upper hull. There's keying to make sure this goes together nice and easily, and boy does it look ridiculous. Fortunately it won't stay this way. Next I add the driver's vision port, I guess you would call this. He's probably not going to be crawling in and out of this, only looking. This fits easily in the recess at the front of the hull. And why not then fill in those giant holes in the side of the hull by adding the side parts. I know, shocking right? This almost drops right into place. You might have to nudge it a bit and apply some pressure so that it stays where you want it, but it does fit quite well. There is of course one of these on either side. I guess it's a bit redundant to say that, isn't it? Oh well. Let's now put the rear plate on. This is another part that just drops right into place. A little pressure to make sure there aren't any unwanted gaps, and it's on. The lower front plate comes next, and I'm sure you'll be surprised to hear me say that the fit is pretty good. I did need to apply pressure here because a gap wanted to form, but holding the parts in place for a few moments while the glue works its magic is all you have to do. That's the structure of the hull more or less completed. Now we just need to add a detail or two. Starting with this drive shaft. This part has keying and should be pretty hard to put on backwards, but just in case, the shorter shaft goes towards the front. I then install the forward axle, which is pretty simple. Make sure to add glue at all three contact points, or the glue god will smite you. Okay, the glue god probably won't do anything, but you do want good bonds, right? It makes sense to put the rear axle in place next. The axle parts do look kind of similar, but they're different enough that you shouldn't get them confused. Even if you're easily confused like I am. There are two holes near each end of the forward axle into which I glue this steering bar thingy, which probably has a technical term that I don't know. It's a bit fiddly, but some nudging should see it in its place. Into this recess on the bottom of the hull, I glue this plate. I guess this is to protect the differential box, which seems like a thing that would work better when it's not being smashed into things. A muffler and exhaust pipe parts can be installed next, 
which you shouldn't find too exhausting to do. This is mostly not going to be visible unless the vehicle is upside down, but it is nice to have. Next I install this, I don't know, it looks like an exhaust, but the previous part had an exhaust pipe on it as well. Whatever it is, it goes on pretty easily, though a little bit of knife nudging was needed. Having mud come flying up off the wheels, or eventual wheels, seems like a gosh darn annoyance, so why not add some mud guards? There's a couple of slots for this part to mount onto, so it's quite easy to get right. I add a bit of extra glue on the inside to make sure that it will be bonded good and proper. On top of the mudguard, I glue this fire extinguisher. Nothing particularly tricky about mounting this, and it seems like a good thing to include if you want to prevent fire. If you want to do things a different way, you could glue the fire extinguisher to the mudguard before installing it. Wild, right? More than one way to do a thing? Who would have thought? No matter which way you put your fire extinguishers on, installation of the mudguard is exactly the same, and it's quite simple. Before installing the front mudguards, it seems like a good idea to install this, I guess it's a lifting point? There's one of these on either side and, unsurprisingly, they're a little bit fiddly to install owing to them being small, thin parts. It's obviously not impossible though, you can tell because I managed to get it done. These long suspension-y shock absorbery parts go into place next. It looks like these would be very difficult to install after the front mudguards are on, so we might as well do it now. At first I was a little bit confused as to how these parts connect to the axle, but I think I got it right in the end. These look quite weird if you ask me. They seem strangely long, but then what would I know about suspension? Nothing, that's what. Finally, we can install the front mudguards, and wouldn't you know it, they're just as easy to get into place as those at the rear, which is to say, very easy. There's still a bunch of stuff to do here, but it's looking good so far. The next thing I did was to assemble some wheels. Four of them to be exact. Why four? Why not? This is a simple matter of gluing the back of the wheel part into the other part, the front. There's keying here, and that's because there is a D-shaped keying for the axles. I'm not entirely sure why this is, it seems a bit redundant because these wheels don't have that bulge at the bottom to simulate the vehicle's weight or anything like that. Not really a problem, just an observation. Before I attach those, it seems like a really good idea to attach the rear lifty things. They don't really look like the wheel would impede installing them too much, but you never know. They go on pretty much exactly the same as the ones on the front. And now, wheels. You can see that D-shaped keying here. Despite that, there's a little bit of play in the wheels, but that's okay. Just make sure that they're on nice and straight and they'll look good. It's nice to have a place to store things. And what better than a box? Two boxes, I guess. That's why I install two stowage boxes on top of the rear mud guards. There's keying here to ensure they go on nice and neat. I add a little extra glue along the sides, which being extra thin cement, will seep along and under the part for a good bond. Praise the glue god. Into the slots on the rear of the mud guards, I add these. Well, I'm not sure what they are. They could be oil or fuel cans. The little round things on top in the corners would suggest that, though they do look a bit different to the fuel tins we'll add later. Whatever they are, they're not at all difficult to get into place. The other fuel tins I mentioned all those seconds ago are installed on the front mud guards here. These are the old British ones, so you wouldn't call them jerry cans. I'm pretty sure they were known as flimsies. The keying guides the positioning of these, ensuring that the two on the right hand side aren't facing the same way as each other, because apparently that's important. Let's add some more stowage boxes. This slightly angled one mounts onto the right side with no issue thanks to the keying. Pressure and a little bit of glue down the side of it is about all you need. The one on the left side is a bit different, but installation is the same, and very easy. Actually, I'm not sure this is a stowage box, because it doesn't seem to have the latch detail moulded on, but whatever it is, it's no problem to install. And now it's time to assemble this convoy lamp. This is pretty easy to do, though I think I did get the front part on at a slight angle. Instead of installing that, I put this jack on the rear. Or at least I think this is a jack. It could be something else. Wouldn't be the first time old Herbert has misidentified a part. Not even the first time in this video, most likely. 
Next, I put this box here on the front left mudguard behind the fuel can. Again, keying guides it, and it's nice and easy. And I think you will agree that it's very box. I feel like now is the right time to install that headlamp I just assembled. It goes into this little slot in the front right, just above the mudguard. And as you can probably see, I did indeed install the front of that lamp slightly wonky. Maybe we can just imagine that the person who fitted it was drunk. Wait, that was me. I wasn't drunk, I'm just bad. Oh well. It's a good idea to carry at least one spare wheel, especially if you're planning on doing war stuff. So I assemble this one, which is quite similar to the assembly of the regular wheels, though the parts are obviously a bit different. And why not glue that right into place? There are some rather obvious mounting holes for it on the right side of the hull. Nice and easy. Next I install some bars. Well, it looks like a bar and the other one looks like it might be a tool handle. There's a couple of recesses this mounts into, and I had to do a little bit of nudging with my knife to get a good final position. Then I add another handle looking thing above that. Installation is pretty much the same. There's a hole in the top of the hull, dear Liza, dear Liza. There's a hole in the top of the hull. And we can cover that with this part. It just drops right into place nice and easy. On top of that, a stowage box, why not? This also drops right into place, and I would imagine it to be quite hard to mess this up. To go with those tool handles we put on earlier, we'll need some tool heads. In this case, a pick. It goes here. A shovel seems like a helpful bit of kit, doesn't it? That can be installed here, just in front of the pick head. It goes on nice and easy, and looks pretty good in my opinion. You could dig so many holes with that. On the front left mudguard I add this tiny thing. I think it's a horn or a siren or something. Either way, it's tiny, which makes it a bit fiddly to install. Tweezers are recommended. Brush guards come next. I think these are a nice detail, though they are a bit thin and could easily be broken, so I would suggest being careful with them. They're not too hard to get into place, a little bit of nudging to make sure they sit right and they're on. The final detail for the hull are these rear view mirrors. Helpful if you want to see what's chasing you. Like the brush guards, these are quite thin and you could easily break them, so be careful. They're not too hard to install, and you'll notice a completed turret in the background. That's because I'm a forgetful boy, and accidentally skipped over this step and didn't realise until the end. At least I didn't forget them completely. Also, they do look rather good. It is now time for making turret. I start with these doodads which will hold the gun. Pressing the parts together is quite simple, and you can see how it will fit inside the turret front. I glue that assembly into place, though I leave the middle part unglued so it will still move. That should help me get the gun elevation I want later. I leave that to sit for a bit so the glue can bond properly, and then I assemble this searchlight. This is a simple matter of gluing the lens part onto the body. Easy. Next, I glue the gun mantlet onto the front of the turret. I don't know where else you might put it. This is where you would make a decision about the gun elevation. And then, why not glue the main gun into place? This is simple, and the gun does look quite good. The end of the barrel has a recess in it, so it doesn't need to be drilled out by me. Or anybody. I always appreciate that. It's much neater to have this moulded in, than for me to drill it. I set that aside for a moment, while I glue the two halves of the turret together. Easy is a word I would use to describe this process. I then glue the turret front assembly onto the rest of the turret. I might have got a little bit excited with the glue here, and you can see that it spilled down the side. But as long as you don't put your finger in it, it should be fine. Next I add what I'm pretty sure are smoke launchers. Probably an important thing for a scouting vehicle to have, and they're very easy to get into place. Remember that lamp I assembled? Well now it's time to install that. It goes here on the turret's right. I press it into place with my knife because the smoke launchers made it hard to do so with my fat fingers. A machine gun goes to the left of the main gun, fitting neatly into the little recess there. I give it a gentle boop so it's as close to being straight relative to the main gun as I can get it. Hatches come next. There's nothing tricky about installing these. Just glue and a bit of pressure and they should sit nicely in place. There is actually a crew figure included, so if you wanted, you could model these open with or without a crew figure standing out of the turret. 
Though to do that you'll have to cut the hatch parts in half. Obviously I've chosen not to do that. Next comes this, I'm pretty sure this is an air vent. It looks a bit weird in the way that it slightly hangs over the front of the turret, but it's keyed and that's where it fits, so it's probably right. An antenna mount goes on the back of the turret here, and if you wanted to be fancy, you could add an antenna with some wire or stretched out sprue. And you could do the same with this other antenna mount on the right rear. Obviously I've done that to neither of those, I think it looks fine the way it is. This one took a fair bit of nudging before it was sitting nice and straight, but I got there in the end. And speaking of the end, this is it. The end of the gluing of the bits of plastic together. The turret is connected with the hull using the simple locking tab mechanism, and the British 7 ton armoured car Mark IV in 148th scale by Tamiya is now completed. And if you ask me, I think it looks pretty good. I think I've said that a few times already today. It's true though. I mean, the vehicle itself is a bit ugly, and I don't think it was designed with aesthetics in mind, but that doesn't mean it doesn't look cool. I think it does, and as far as I'm concerned, that's what matters. I think armoured cars are pretty interesting. There's a whole bunch of these odd looking wheelie boys and it's fascinating to see the differences in various armoured cars that were designed throughout the war. The detailing on this model is pretty good. Obviously I'm no expert, so it could be wildly inaccurate and I wouldn't really know, but I don't think that's the case. I don't have any immediate plans for painting this model, but I think it's going to paint up really nicely. There's a bunch of interesting bits and pieces that should make painting fun, and it should end up looking even better than it does now. The build was pretty enjoyable. Like I probably said earlier, it has been quite a while since I actually built this, but I do remember having fun doing so, and I suppose if it was awful, somehow, I would certainly remember that. That's just how it works. I encountered no major issues, or even minor ones really, none of the parts were defective and cleanup was minimal. I also recall it being a fairly quick build as well. Maybe it was done in a single stream, I don't remember. But speaking of stream, if you would like to watch me build stuff like this live, I do so over on Twitch and there's a link to my channel in the description below. Give me a follow and come say hi when I'm live. It'll be good times. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. If you've built one of these or any other cool models and you want to share, why not drop by our Discord community and show some pictures. We would love to see what you've done. And if you've not already done so, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch. And if you're feeling really helpful, why not share this video with all your friends and family and anybody you think might get something out of it. Links to all of my things are in the description below, and as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.